What if one fighter jet could do it all? Replace nearly every combat aircraft in the U.S. military, serve multiple branches, and even fly in foreign air forces around the world? That was the bold vision behind the F-35 Lightning II. But why did the Air Force, Navy, and Marine Corps decide to design a single jet together when their missions and needs are so different? To answer that, we need to look at the three distinct variants that make up the F-35 family. The A, the B, and the C. Each one tailored to a specific role, yet all built on a common platform. But just how different are they really? Are we talking about one aircraft with slight changes, or three very different jets that happen to share a name? Let's start with the most widely used version, the F-35A. Built for the U.S. Air Force and most foreign air forces, it's the most common and most affordable of the three. Designed for conventional takeoff and landing from traditional runways, the F-35A is the Air Force's go-to stealth fighter. It's replacing the aging F-16s and A-10s, and was even considered as a partial successor to the F-15, though the Air Force decided to keep the F-15 in service due to its unmatched payload capacity and long-range capabilities. Interestingly, even as the F-35 rises in prominence, the Air Force is still investing in the upgraded F-15EX. So why is the F-35A such a hit with allied countries? Nations like Australia, Norway, Japan, and the Netherlands have embraced it because it offers cutting-edge stealth powerful sensors, and multi-role capability, all without the need for carriers or specialized infrastructure. It's a land-based jet with global appeal. But what if your mission doesn't allow for long runways? What if you need to launch from remote bases or the deck of a small ship? That's where the F-35B comes in. This variant has a game-changing feature it can take off and land vertically. Borrowing the concept from the iconic Harrier jump jet, the F-35B takes it to a whole new level, offering stealth and supersonic speed in a compact package. Thanks to its vertical lift fan and swiveling rear nozzle, the F-35B can operate from amphibious assault ships and makeshift airstrips making it the perfect fit for the U.S. Marine Corps. Ships like the USS Wasp, USS America, and USS Essex have been modified to support the jet, turning these vessels into small but powerful aircraft carriers. And the F-35B isn't just a Marine Corps asset. It's also been adopted by the Royal Navy, the Italian Navy, and Japan all of whom are using or modifying their smaller carriers to handle this vertical lift marvel. Of course, adding vertical lift comes at a cost. The F-35B sacrifices internal space and fuel capacity to make room for its unique propulsion system. That means it has less range and payload compared to its siblings, so what if you want the range and performance needed for full-scale carrier operations, but don't need vertical lift? That's exactly why the F-35C exists. Designed for the U.S. Navy's supercarriers, the F-35C is the largest of the three variants. It has larger wings, a more robust landing gear, and more internal fuel than the other models. These changes allow it to handle the brutal catapult launches and arrested landings that are part of daily life on an aircraft carrier. Unlike the B model, which is about flexibility, the F-35C is all about endurance, carrier integration, and range. 
It's built to go farther and stay on station longer, perfect for long missions over vast oceans. However, despite its impressive capabilities, no foreign navy has yet adopted the F-35C. Even the British Royal Navy, with its massive Queen Elizabeth-class carriers, chose the F-35B for its flexibility and ease of operation. Interestingly, even the U.S. Navy hasn't fully fielded the F-35C across all its carriers yet. Retrofitting these massive ships to support the jet is a slow, expensive process. Ships like the USS Carl Vinson, USS Abraham Lincoln, and USS George Washington have already been modified. But ironically, the Navy's newest carrier, the USS Gerald R. Ford, may be one of the last to fully deploy with F-35Cs. So, are these really just three variants of the same aircraft? Or are they essentially three different jets sharing a name in some design DNA? The truth lies somewhere in the middle. While all F-35s share core avionics, stealth technology, and mission systems, the differences in takeoff methods, carrier suitability, and flight range make each version uniquely suited to its role. They were designed to be versatile, but they're far from interchangeable. And why did the military go down this path in the first place? The goal was to save money, streamline logistics, and create a shared platform that could serve the diverse needs of multiple services and allies. But some argue that this compromise delayed development and increased overall costs. Others believe the result is still a triumph of modern engineering, a fighter jet that pushes the boundaries of what's possible in air combat today. Whatever your opinion, one thing is certain. The F-35 has redefined what a modern fighter jet can be. With its global reach, unmatched versatility, and cutting-edge technology, it hasn't just reshaped the battlefield, it's rewritten the rulebook for air power in the 21st century. The F-35A, B, and C aren't just variants. Together, they represent a bold new chapter in military aviation. One jet, three paths, and a unified vision for the skies of tomorrow.